Joe, how did all this get started? Bob, I have to tell you, it's my love for the great outdoors and my love for food. I've had, uh, <laughs> it's the truth, if you can't tell. My dad owned a restaurant for 17 years in on North Asheville, and I grew up in there and learned uh, the catering business and all about food and doing special events. I since then have created a special event company. For 10 years, it's been running beautifully. But my whole life, thanks to Grandpa Lasher, I have had a love for hunting and fishing. And this day, more than ever, I think that I realized uh, that there's a need to introduce people to the reason why we hunt or to keep that focus on why we hunt. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a, a people of convenience now, and I understand we can go to the store and buy a steak. But that steak, guess what? It did have a face. But we forget that, and the general public tends to forget that. And and which really makes hunting uh, even more uh, focused on the thrill of the kill rather than, uh, I don't know, I should say harvest, but, you know, the thrill of the kill is the truth. Uh, and so what I like to do is bring people out that are not just all hunters and fishermen, but their wives, their family, and friends, and introduce them to professionally prepa prepared game meats uh, and, and let them see that we're A, not bad people, the food is phenomenal, and hunting and fishing and harvesting of wild game uh, is, a is, a, is, is necessary and is natural. Through this website, I have a mission. There are two, three things that I love, and mostly in this, most of the time in this order. <laughs> and that's God, my family, and hunting and fishing. It depends on what time of the year it is. Well, this wild game, Joe, isn't it? Well, this is quite different for me. I haven't had wild game really like this all in one place in a long time. Years ago, I used to hunt a lot, but then I decided to become basically a vegetarian. And I've had all types of meat besides bison. So I thought I'd like to try that. How is it? And it's great. I was yeah. surprised. <laughs> Do you think there's a benefit of eating uh, this type of meat rather than, uh, say, domestic? Uh, yes, I would like to think so because of uh, what we found out that our, our animals are being fed by, you know, with the steroids and, and penicillin type things. And I just feel, actually feel like this is probably about the safest meat we can have. You got it right. Thanks. Bon appetit. Yes, it's marvelous. Let's see it. <laughs> what are you having? Well, I'm having uh, rattlesnake, rattlesnake beans. It's got real rattlesnake in it. Bison burger, and the bison, bison burger is delicious. Yeah, have you had this before? I've had bison before, a bison burger before. I have not had beans with rattlesnake in it before. Take a bite, let me, let me know how it tastes. <laughs> I'm curious about this myself, I've never eaten rattlesnake. It's wonderful. I think it's just pinto beans, they're just giving a fancy name. You want taste? Oh. I think it's a tall rattlesnake tail. You don't think there's and rattlesnake beans in there? <laughs> I've heard all my life that people don't like this gamey taste. What is the gamey taste? Well, a lot of the gamey taste has, is just another way of saying it's spoiled while you drug it out of the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, the key to uh, making game palatable is you got to handle it right from the very beginning. You got to get the temperature down as quickly as you can. You got to get it dressed and in cooler as fast as you can, just like anything. I mean, if you go to the grocery store and buy a cut of meat, you're not going to drag it through the woods to take it home. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to take care of it right. And if you handle meat just as if it, you bought it in the grocery store, you're going to go a long way towards getting rid of that gamey taste. Yeah. Again, with wild game, it is a different kind of thing. These are older animals and they're tougher animals, so they are going to have a little bit more character in, the, in their flavor than mm -hmm. a domestic animal would. Alan, you can't cook wild game exactly the way you can domesticate it. What's the secret? It's not so much a secret as it is an attitude. You have to love the game just like anything else that you're doing. Uh, wild game tends to be a little tougher and a little drier because of the lifestyle these animals lead. They're out there running from predators and chasing down their own uh, food, and so they've got a little bit more uh, a bite to the meat, uh, unlike domestic animals, which are raised just to be tender. Sure. Uh, the secret usually for making something tender is to cook it slow with lots of moist heat. Mm -hmm. General rule of thumb is if it's a tough cut of meat, you cook it slow and low. If it's a tender cut of meat, you cook it, cook it high and fast. They're just a ministry that uh, takes care of the uh, local hunger folks in, in the different areas around the country.
So funds that you raise go to uh, agencies that uh, supply food for the Well, what it is is it's a venison feeding ministry where hunters they'll take they take their game in the field and they'll they'll take it to a local venison, uh, processing station and they'll donate that that meat to the to them and then what we do is we raise the money to help pay for that processing cost. Uh, last year across the nation, we um, farmers and hunters feeding hungry uh, finally reached the million pound mark. Uh, feeding those that are less fortunate across the nation and then uh, we just although we had just started the uh, the Bunker County chapter of Farmers and Hunters Feeding Hungry we um, we did donate a hundred pounds last year and we're looking to, to donate several hundred pounds again this year uh, uh, Lord willing. Talking to Jim Mosley like myself an avid, avid hunter and fisherman Jim an event like this I know we both grew up uh, hunting and fishing uh, and I know you're well familiar with What does an event like this mean to you personally? Well, you know, it really brings back the fond memories of going back to my youth and, and hunting. Uh, I've been hunting since uh, seven, eight years old. And even where I grew up in South Carolina, when you had game, mm -hmm. you know, it was shared throughout the neighborhood because everybody had enough for their freezer. Uh, but due to the abundance, of game, deer, quail, dove, duck, whatever it may be, you know, you shared it with us. You know, back then, uh, you didn't have an official uh, sanction, you know, like uh, Mana Food mm -hmm. Bank or, you know, gather for, you know, or some, or for shelters right. or whatever. Right. It just right. wasn't done. I mean, plus we were in such a small town, you didn't have it. But uh, the elderly or those, you know, who needed help, mm -hmm. there was always game. Oh. And there was a lot of game. Yeah. So I think, you know, a, a, an event like this really is something that started a long time ago. Yeah. And now it's just something that's more publicized. And uh, that's, that's a, it's a beautiful thing, really, because it exposes a lot of people to uh, wild meat that they've never tasted before. I know uh, when we were growing up as hunters and fishermen, Dad's last rule was always don't shoot it unless you plan to eat it. And a lot of people never get a chance to do that. And of course, a lot of our viewers have never tasted blood and maybe don't hunt and fish at all. But uh, it's important, uh, I think, that anything that's utilized, so far as the harvesting wild game, should be utilized. True, I'll agree with that uh, totally. And, and one of the great things, and I say I go back to my youth and I still uh, hunt in South Carolina, you know, still have a farm and everything. And because we have such an abundance where uh, deer is, uh, especially deer, yeah. uh, needs a management. And, yeah, they do. They have to be managed. In yeah, our absolutely. particular county, there's not a limit. Yeah. So therefore, you need to harvest a lot of animals, but the flip side is a lot, I mean, tons of meat are given away. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's not wasted. And I think the biologists have done a wonderful job in yes, helping the people to do it. So you have an events like this that come up, people who've never had an mm -hmm. opportunity to taste wild yeah. game, and to see uh, how the event goes on, it's a wonderful thing because people don't know understand hunting, mm -hmm. and they see you know the positive aspects of hunting and what it can do to a community Absolutely. where there is a shortage of food. Yeah, and a lot of people, if you ask 100 individuals why they hunt, you'll get 100 individual answers. It's something that's very personal with each and every one of us. But uh, folks who are not familiar with hunting and why hunting is not only uh, something that you can pursue with no afterthought, but the fact that it has to be done to manage game herds. You have X amount of terrain, X amount of food, we'll support X amount of animals. We've run into that all over.